What are you doing here? I am here to be an ultimate fighter. I'm street certified. Now it's time to be ultimate fight certified. So how did it come together? Oh man, I was up to the brains. Up to the brains. I, mean, I got the car and said, hey, it's time to do this. Was it Joe or Dana who called you? Um, I didn't actually get a call, but my guys, you know, gotcha. on that level, my managers and everybody who took care of everything. And what did you think when you got, got the message? Um, a little excited, didn't know what to expect. You know, I had a house full of guys, a lot of testosterone walking around. And being the guy to have the, being the only guy to have the, the bullseye on your back, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like in jail in a sense, being in jail in a sense, you know, but except that these guys got skills, you know, they know how to fight, you know, which is not a bad thing, because I'm a fighter myself. Well, what did you think about the, the actually going into, a, into the house and living with these guys? You, you've had it, you know, handlers, you know, people sort of catering to your needs for a long time. Well, not really catering, you know, you kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's put everything in perspective. So all the fighters have different people who handle different things. You know what I'm saying? This is kind of like the same in a sense, but when it comes down to, to really fighting and training, you know what I'm saying? You, you're kind of here already with the skills you, you have. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're pretty much just, the training is, I don't, I don't take anything from the coaches. I haven't really trained with them yet. You know what I'm saying? But you kind of, you know, it's like, look, you know, at any given time, you got to fight. You know, so it's like, you're going to sit here and wait until it's time to fight, you know, and like being out there in the world, in the real world, out there in the world, you can kind of like, you know what I'm saying, go here, go there, do whatever, get your mind off of certain things, you know, just to have, but it's different for me to just sit in one spot for hours looking at a blue room or a green room and painting with skeletons everywhere, you know, it kind of fucks with you a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but is it a positive in terms of the focus? It all depends on your mentality, you know, how you look at it, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at it in a positive way. I thank Dana for giving me the opportunity to prove myself, you know what I'm saying, regardless of what the guys think, you know, you know, being on my team or on the other team, you know, you hear little things here and there, you know, but no one directly say anything to me, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, I'm, I'm a street fighter. I'm a fighter. You know, I, you know, I, I don't fight. <laughs> Push come to shove, I'm going to fight. What happened, uh, you're no longer training with boss. Uh, what were you doing training-wise before you came on uh, on this show? Boss was more, um, he was a mental support, you know, for me being, um, like I said, coming into the sport, coming into to the sport of mixed martial arts, you know, later in the game like I did, you know, he, he kind of mentally put me in the mind frame of being in the cage and fighting with the ref and having the gloves on and knowing, you know, how to defend your stuff to a certain extent and, you know, and, and things like that. So he was more of a more mental support. Were you training, though? Like, but, you know, have you been training in the last yes. uh, three months yes. or four yes. months? Yes. Uh, where, where have you been training? I've been training st still at Elite MMA, you know, with um with my guy Randy Katami. Oh, okay, so Thousand Oaks. Yeah, okay. Thousand Oaks. I've been training with Randy Katami, you know, as my head trainer. And Raul, Raul trains with the Gracies. And, um, you know, showing me a little groundwork. But I only had, like, a couple weeks for them to get me right to come into the house, you know. So what was it like uh, after the loss? Um, a reality check, you know. We gather my thoughts, you know, and, you know, knowing where not to make the same mistakes again. Like I said, it is, fighting is more mental than it is, than it is physical. You know, you have to be 100% mental and maybe 70% physical. Because no one, no one goes into a fight 100%. Mm -hmm. you know, especially if you train every day doing this. It's always going to be a little nick, a little crank, a little something here and there. You, know, you just got to push through it. You, mentally, you got to push through it. So were you kind of screwed mentally that night with the way the whole thing came down? In a sense. You know, I, I wasn't there just the way how everything played out, played out. You know, I did a lot of things that I, should, I wouldn't have done. You know, coming out, going straight forward. You know, not even keeping my guards right, not even having my, my game plan in my head. You know, so it was just a lot of, I, I kind of beat myself. You know, so that little puff just, just sat me down. Did you, uh, did you take a break before going back to training? Like, how long was it? Um, you just kind of relaxed and thought about what you wanted to do? Um, I took a little bit of time off because the, uh, the organization that I was fighting for at the time, they was going through whatever they were going through. 
So it kind of, I kind of took a little, you know, a little more time than normal. What was your reaction to the, the stories that came out where Seth Petrozelli uh, said he was paid to fight a certain way, and then all of a sudden now you lose? It's a big story, but now we're talking fight fixing. I mean, it just got really crazy there. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. What do you hope to get out of this experience? Um, a learning process. You know, um, had an opportunity to meet Rampage. You know, seeing Rashad and you know, a couple of, couple of good guys, and I just hope to learn something from it. You know. Be away, you know, as again, another sacrifice, you know, away from my family, the kids, and you know what I'm saying, all that, and to be in this house for the guys, you know, it's just, you know, I hope to learn something good from it in a positive way, you know. Do you get a good vibe from them? Do you get a good vibe from the people? I mean, for what it's worth, you know, they, like I said, everyone respect each other to a certain extent. No one's being really disrespectful, you know, everyone respects each other for what they can bring to the table. You know, you got a lot of good wrestlers, good grapplers, you know. A um, couple of good strikers, you know, everyone has their own little signature move, you know. UFC 100 is here. It's the biggest event in UFC history. The tickets are impossible to get, but not totally. Hit either Three Tomatoes and a Mozzarella this week. It's free to sign up, and you get extra entries if you take advantage of Bud Light and Tequila Casadori specials at both Three Tomatoes and a Mozzarella locations today through Friday. You can hit the North Las Vegas location at 945 West Craig or on the south side of town at 6485 South Rainbow. And you can join Steve Cofield this Friday night at the 945 West Craig Road location for your chance to win tickets to UFC 100.